it always takes a little bit of time to work out the perfect camping solution. And Mrs. Mad Matt and I have been exploring options to make the perfect camping solution for us when we're touring with just the Land Cruiser. So today we're gonna to look at the 270 degree awning from Darshi and the Darshi Nebula swag that we've got set up over here. So Mrs. Mad Matt and I have been using the awning and the Nebula for quite a while and we've used it in a lot of different situations. So we've got a bit of an experience of how they work, what we like and what we dislike. So the first thing with the awning, let's just focus on that for a moment. The awning is really easy to set up and to pack down. And think of going to the beach for the day, that's exactly what you want. You want to be able to pull up, put the awning up, get some shade, enjoy your time and then you go, let's move up the road a bit pack it up and move and it is really easy to do that. Now obviously when you're setting up like that you're not going to set up all these walls and everything. We're camped here without moving the car for like three nights so that's why we've set up a much more extensive campsite. While I'm at this part of the awning one of the considerations to be aware of and it, it, it most likely won't bother anybody else but it just has to do with how our um, draw system works and it's to do with this part of the awning here. So this drawer comes out and it's full of junk and then we've got this table slide that comes out and that just comes outside of the awning there. So it's just a consideration and I only raise it because it may be a consideration for you. So there is an awning panel that zips on here and goes out as a cover. So if it was pouring rain, that's what we would do with this situation today for us. The next thing I wanted to point out to you is these poles here. So these poles, they actually clip into these, um, the framework up the top here and they live in there. And I like that because it's just, it's all together. I, I get frustrated when you've got lots of different components to your, to your accessories that a bit has to live here and a bit has to live there. That annoys me. So these poles living with the frame just works great. And the poles can actually clip off, which is cool as well, because sometimes you don't, want, don't need the pole there for whatever reason, or you want that pole to come onto this, this frame here and so you can clip it on there. So it's got that flexibility, which is kind of nice as well. Let me show you how these poles work. So you lift the pole up there, screw that in, put that up there, and that's it, it's packed away. And it's on that little hinge pin down there, which can come out. So it just pops off like that. So yeah, I like it, it's nice and easy. So let's talk a little bit more about the side panels and the, well, these panels here. So they're, they're quite flexible in the way you can set them up and use them. Now, I've tried to set up a bit of a variety here to give you an idea of how they can set up. For, so firstly, you can fold it up like this so that it's ready to go when you want to put it out or whatever you want to do with it. This section here and this section are one piece though. They, they're joined through here and they zip onto the awning together. Okay, so just be aware of that. So I've got this section here set up like this. Now, you can see it's sagging in the middle here. So it's gonna be superb for, a, you want some shade on a, on a hot day, and this setup's gonna work for that. If the weather goes a bit foul, you might put a pole in the center here, or drop these poles, or peg it down, down to the ground. But the thing is, it's flexible. It gives you lots of options. Come on underneath and I'll show you some other things going on. So there's three panels for the side awning. So you've got panel number one over there. This two sections is panel number two and then panel number three. And the panels are labeled on these little labels here. So you just have to match it up. W2, wall two, I guess. W2, wall two, match that together. And you know then that you're getting the right panel on the right segments of the awning. And if you move down here, you can see how we've set the awning up here, or the wall, so that it gives us nice rain protection over the swag, so you can get out of the swag under cover. We like setting it up that way. The other big advantage, and this is really more for the ladies, is with this wall set up here, 
you can have the bucket for the midnight piddle over in the corner there. And it just gives you that level of privacy, which, you know, you're camping, so you don't get as much privacy as you might like, but it does give you enough privacy for that midnight pee. Now, I forgot to mention, should you have all the walls up on the, on the awning and they're all pegged down to the ground, you would set the swag up, if you wanted to do this, you'd set the swag up over in this side down the front here because this whole panel here has a big zip in door. So you can open this up, you can roll it up to the top here and access this enclosed space through that door there. So that's a really nice feature should you be in a windy campsite, a, a, I don't know, you want a bit of extra privacy, whatever it is, that's the beauty of having flexibility. So that door, not a bad idea. Now where the main frame or arms come into the main body or chassis of the awning, these points right here are actually designed to fail if the wind grabs the awning. Now there's a whole thing out there where people got really excited about freestanding awnings. Great idea to have a freestanding awning, but there's some genuine challenges with that because you've got a massive sail area up here and if a gust of wind comes in under here, it's going to lift the awning up. And there's numerous stories of awnings going over the top of vehicles. Now, this is not a freestanding awning other than when you're setting it up, it'll support itself, assuming it's not windy. And really, you should have two people to do it. So you set the awning up, but should something happen and it gets blown over the vehicle, it's designed to rip out these rivets here and these arms come detached so that the awning can do it you know sort of fail over the top the beauty of that is you can then pull these back down and you'll have to work out a little bit of a fix but you can keep camping and you can buy these as a replacement part so you can repair your awning and that's a really good thing so the other thing with freestanding awnings is the concept that it'll be able to support itself and even in a reasonable wind. Well, maybe it can and that's wonderful, but there are a number of cases where the whole awning has literally ripped off the roof rack of the vehicle, damaging the vehicle. So I think it's prudent to set them up with guy ropes and poles and make sure you don't damage your awning and don't damage your car. So that's the nebula. Now we've opened up the side so you can see it a bit better, okay? <laughs> now, this is a really comfy swag to sleep in. It's spacious and you can, you can sit up inside it. It's, it's almost more of a tent than a swag. I think the reason we call it a swag is you can pack it up with everything inside. Well, not your pillows, but we, we use the Cozy series self-inflating mattress inside this tent and uh, or swag and it's it gives us a really nice level of comfort but we can actually roll the swag up with that self-inflator deflated our sheets and a blanket we can roll the whole swag up and all of that's inside inside the swags bag so that's a really good thing. I, I like being able to do that and I find it really comfortable. So it's actually a queen size self-inflating mattress. That's how much space you have inside the swag, even though it doesn't sort of look that big sitting here. It's really easy to set up. So you basically, when you come to set it up, you roll it out, you put this pole in, that pole into these little hooks down the bottom, and then you put that center pole in, the two end poles, clip these on, Mrs. Mad Matt and I doing it, it's taking us well under five minutes. Let's just be safe and say that. And pack down is much the same. I mean, literally you unclip these little end pieces just here, unclip these, pull it apart, fold it out so you can roll it up. And the job is done. So really good in the setup, pack down side of things. The, the negative side, and it's not a negative against the nebula, it's the negative against any two-person swag is the size. It's a, it's a large, bulky swag when it's packed up and in its bag, and we can't really carry it inside the 105. So we have to carry it up on the roof of the vehicle. So uh, any double-person swag is big and bulky. That's the bottom line. 
and if you took two single swags, it'd be big and bulky as well. So if you're looking for a really compact camping solution, these sort of solutions aren't going to be it for you. But if you want a really comfortable, waterproof, um, it's dark inside when, you can't, when you're sleeping, so you want to have a sleep in in the morning, it's nice and dark inside. If you want that style of swag, something like the Nebula is definitely going to tick some boxes for you. So the Nebula comes with a fly over the top of it if you want to use that. Now obviously we're not using it because we've got the awning, but if you didn't have an awning and you wanted to use the tent, well you've got the fly there, comes out, you get a couple of poles and you can peg it out like this, gives you that dry space at the front of the tent where you're getting in and out. And the fly fits on really easy, it's got four little clips that go on and comes off the end of the swag like that. That's easy, it's pretty, pretty easy and simple, but that just gives you that extra level of protection over the nebula. Getting in and out of the nebula is so awesome. It's got four doors. It's got one in each end, so if you choose to set up so you climb in and out the end of the swag, whether, whichever end you like, it's got a door for that, which is pretty cool. Now, Mrs. Mad Matt and I, we use the side doors because each side has got its own door as well. So one of the beauties of that is if you were set up like we are now without that panel that we had set down, I can get out this side of the swag, Mrs. Mad Matt can climb out that side of the swag and you're not climbing over each other during your sleep. With the way we have it set up and the fact that we both tend to get up for the midnight pedal at the same time, we just both get out the same, the same side of the swag. But you've got the option and the flexibility to use the swag how you want to use it. And that's the beauty of customised solutions. So that's how Mrs Mad Matt and I use it, but that's the beauty of this, is you can use it how you want to use it and we're all different. How cool is that? So let's talk about ventilation. This is probably the one area where Mrs. Mad Matt and I feel like the nebula could be improved. It's not that the ventilation is bad, there's just some things about it we go, possibly these could be better. So, you've got this ventilation point here and there's another one over there. They're the only two designed points in the swag that we can understand. The issues with these are, you imagine that you go to sleep at night and you have this open so you get a, a bit of cross breeze, that's lovely middle of the night it starts to drizzle or rain and you want to close this down. You've got to get out of the swag or undo this section here to be able to close that down because the zips are on the outside of the swag. In my mind this section needs to be, you, you need to be able to zip it up from inside. You don't want to get out of bed or have to faff around to close them up. That's my, my personal opinion on the vents there. They do have enough a decent size and you can definitely feel the airflow when they're open like that. The other thing is you've got these sections here which provide like a nice shelter. I, I don't know what the proper word would be but it's a nice shelter over this doorway. But I, I would think that there should be a zip up in the top here so you can open that up as well as the other end and get that breeze or, or airflow through the top of the swag. I think that would be really nice because the only way you can access that at the moment is with this door here which folds up and then you have the fly mesh there but with this out if it starts to rain you've got to close this down in the middle of the night and now you've got a, a it's raining so you've got a lot of humidity and no airflow. So I just think that's an area that could be improved, but it may not bother you. And look, the last two nights we've slept here, there's been no condensation inside the swag at all. Uh, we did camp in a really cold place one night and it was really moist and we did have a bit of condensation. Again, it's, it, it's not like the condensation's bad and you go, oh, this is miserable. It's not like that at all. But you do like to have that airflow, and I think that's one of the points that we'd like to see improved in future models of the Nebula. So as you can see inside, there's heaps of space. Like, I'm comfortably sitting up inside here, and like, oodles of room. So 
it's really cool inside. It's enough space to get changed and, and dressed in here, which is what you want when you want a bit of privacy in a space like this. So it's really good in that sense. And, and the length of the swag is more than enough. I'm six foot tall and I'm in no way topping out top and bottom. There's plenty of head space. So there's enough room inside here to put your pajamas or put your change of clothes inside here as well. There's not really enough space to have your bag of clothes in here as well. You'd, it'd have to be a pretty small bag or you'd have to be a small person. <laughs> but uh, it's really comfy inside here. And as you can see, you know, you can roll the fly mesh up into the, you know, the side there and fold the doors up and all of that. So yeah, really comfy space to be inside the nebula. Now, with regards to the mattress, let me show you something we've got going on over here. So you can see the cosy self-inflator there. Um, yeah, beautiful. And here's the mattress that comes with the swag. Now we've got both of these in here just because we knew we were coming for a couple of days and we wanted all the comforts. But you could very easily remove this foam mattress and just have the self-inflator inside here. Now a quick tip on any swag is always make sure you dry underneath your mattresses from condensation because you can oftentimes get a condensation build up under there and then you roll your swag up, put it in storage, and next thing you've got mold and nasties growing in underneath there and the swag doesn't dry out properly. So always just, you know, before you pack it away, dry out underneath there. Now, as it happens, two nights camping and there's no moisture under there, so that's pretty good, isn't it? Then the last tip I want to leave you with is having a bit of a doormat out the front. So we just had this little square, it's what, a metre square, and it's just a bit of like shade sail and it just gives you a nice mat outside the swag. One of the other considerations, and I believe Darcy's actually working on a solution for this, is as, as you get a little bit older, getting up off the ground, sometimes you get a bit slow, uh, creaky bones, and you, you, you know, they're working on a stretcher, I believe, that will suit the nebula. And it, it's basically a big double person's uh, stretcher. So keep your eye open for that because I reckon that could be pretty cool. All right, guys, look, I hope that's helped you understand how we're using the Dashi 270 degree awning and the Dashi Nebula swag. They're really good quality products, the canvas and all the equipment and the way they're made. It's really good gear and it's well worth considering when you're trying to work out how you want to set up your camp solution so that you can camp well. All right, guys, I'm Mad Matt. It's time to go to bed. Catch you later. <laughs> oh, it's over.